We are live. Greeting four color fans to the greatest show you're watching right now. Greater's notes. Um, and thank you again for everybody for coming in. We'll give you a couple minutes to warm up. We know the weather out there is a little bit chilly, you know, for you people, you know, south of uh, north of Florida. So um, so I'll let you guys um, warm up a little bit. Uh, we are missing uh, Kenny. He he did text me uh, on Insta well, he on Instagram, and he's just leaving work, and he, he had a heck of a day. And Genome David is doing the Lord's work, so he's busy as well. But I have two of my compadres here who are gonna sh who are gonna share this evisceration with me. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to my neighbor right above me here. I think you're still. In Georgia, right, Wayne? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Unruly Simeon, say hello to the folks. What have you been up to, man? I've been up to about 220. I'm trying to work my way back down to about 180. The Unruly <laughs> Simeon is Chubsty. I find that hard to believe. Very hard to believe. Funny. Uh, well, great, great to see you here, buddy, and uh, and thanks. So, as always, pinch hitting for you know the fellas. You're no longer a pitch hitter. You're just you're just a regular here, as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> let's go way up north. I mean, way up north to um, <laughs> to our Mr. Miracle Land up there um, and see how Dave is doing today. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. Um, yeah, I'm not at the North Pole or anything, here, guys. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting pick. Interesting You're closer pick than we are. That's today. all I know. Oh, I'm definitely closer than you guys are. Mm, but, you think so? Uh, down there in the beautiful Florida weather, I'm sure. <clears throat> anyway, yeah. yeah, interesting pick. Um, I don't think we've done one of these adaptation comics before, right? Like, I don't think. Not that I can remember in any of our graders, that's where we did like television adaptation. So a little bit interesting to take a look I at. Don't think so. uh, yeah. I did end up watching like like about an episode and a half of the actual show because it's on Amazon Prime. And uh so yep. I was like, yeah, I went back and I took a look at a couple of episodes. So interesting to see how they compare. Yeah, yeah. And this is is also the first Charlton we've ever done. Um, I've, I've been trying to get a Charlton on here for like three, four times. It keeps getting, you know, the kiboshed. But um, this is the first time that kiboshed. we actually got a Charlton on here. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Is that right? I kiboshed. thought we did. Yeah. You guys oh, actually. You're right. I can't remember. We've well, done like... we... You thought we did what? I thought oh, we must have yeah, done my one. My internet's flaky. Three years. Always. I know we've done Malibu comics so. and image so. comics and all kinds of stuff. So. Yep. Yeah. We've yeah. we've done some some obscure stuff, but I don't think we've done this. Well, before we get started, let's get to this chat. Let's shout them out because you know the, these are the guys that keep us going. These are these are the cogs in the machine. You know, the gas in the tank, all that stuff. Uh, of course, Unruly was here way early with the peace sign. Uh, Las Cruces, 1971. Of course, is. You know, he's everywhere. This man is like, he's like omnipresent, you know. I mean, he's just, every chat I see, he's in there. Uh, so thank you so much for coming here. Moderator extraordinaire Jackson Roy Kirk is in here. How you doing, my friend? Of course, Mr. Miracle hey, saying Jackson. hello, true believers. Uh, a comic bookworm, uh, a newer channel, but Nauman is a great, great uh, YouTuber. I highly recommend him. Put his link in the chat, one of the moderators, because you'll definitely want to sub to this guy. My pal Aaron, Deadpool2323 from Pasco. How you doing, my friend? I hope you and the family are doing well. Scar Pads Comic Trick. Great to have you here. I have that issue. There were only eight issues. That's correct. Actually, I, th I thought there were only seven. Maybe I'm missing one. Man. Okay. Uh, thank you for that information. I have them all, too. Burn art in there. State art. Well, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, Charlton 66 should be here. Yeah. If, if I would have known that we would have had, uh, Kenny and David missing, I might've invited him in as well. Uh, Gore Vidal, very knowledgeable. Uh, oh, very knowledgeable. I would not want to go up against this guy in a trivia contest. He says space 99 was great. I watched it when I was a kid. Me too. 
Uh, I didn't completely understand it, but the mystery of space captivated me. You and I have similar impressions there. And I think that's it. Thank you for putting that in the chat. Everybody sub up, everybody else. And if um, maybe later on, we'll put scar pads on there as well. Okay, so the aforementioned Space 1999 from 1975. Let me make myself big real quick here, gentlemen, and I will come back, back to you guys. Um, yep. Interesting thing about this comic is that it came out right around the same time as the show. The show was in, came out in September of 75. This is November cover date, so it probably came out late August, probably right around where the show came out. So... You know, consider that when you take about your think about your concept grade, about how that went into uh, the creation of this comic. All right, um, it is a favorite show of mine. Uh, I was, I think, 11, 10 or eleven around the time. I think yeah, I was eleven. Yeah. So, you know, I was a big. I'm a big sci-fi fan, and Star Trek had finished. Of course, that that was in reruns anyway. Um, and there were very few other shows. Time Tunnel was another favorite that had finished. So this was, you know, one of Metarog's favorite shows. So I had to get this series. There's also a magazine series by Charlton, but I do not have those. I was a comic book guy, most you know, for, first and foremost. So I didn't really get it that way. So that is corn up sort of the the preface of it. Um, it's written by Nicholas Cutie or Cootie, and he wrote. So I think it was exclusively a Charlton writer. He wrote so many uh, different uh, Charlton series, including E-Man, one of my favorites. And Joe Staten was a very, very long-time Charlton artist. He also worked on DC some. I don't recall if he worked on Marvel any. Um, so those are the kind of the players here for this comic. The reason I chose it, a couple, couple reasons. One is that it was... A Charlton and I, I had to get a Charlton on here because these guys, you know, like the more modern independence and in DC and, and Marvel, right? But I wanted to get one of these on here because they have the Charltons have really been growing on me. I've got more than a long, uh, short box now of, of collecting them, and I'm just really beginning to appreciate them, and because of the sci-fi aspect, right? So before we, before we, I think I've talked enough. Hey, Kenny's in here. How you doing, my friend? Be careful out there. Uh, I think he also wrote the Phantom. Yeah, yeah. He wrote so many different ones. You know, it's just, it's, it's. I, we'd be here all day if we talked about that. All right. So let's get into the cover, right? Let's get into the cover right away. Um, un, uh, unruly. You want me to stay on here with the cover, or uh, do you guys have a digital? I'm trying to pull it up. I'm having an issue. Yeah. Hold the. Hello. Oh, dang it. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I can just I can just stay here and I can make myself big if you want to talk and point out whatever you want. I cannot believe this. I just had the damn thing. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I'm like you, Roger. I'm I'm a big Charlton fan. I'm a big Staten fan. And I think it's 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 always difficult to adapt a comic to actors' faces, or at least in my opinion. And I thought he did an admirable right. job, more than admirable, on that cover with Martin Landau, and I forget her name. And the composition is great. Barbara for, Bain. For, for a Charlton comic, that's about as good as it gets right there. You got the moon in the background, the spaceship, the, the, the leads drawn fairly competently, and the little Charlton bullseye logo in the corner. I love it. I love it. Uh. Now, as far as the show, I need to go back and rewatch it because I remember when it came out, it wasn't, it didn't get a network over here. It was in syndication and I was in Florida at the time. And I remember watching the first episode and I was not impressed, but remember I was a 12 year old kid and I just wanted space explosions. And that's not how the British roll, you know, they're much more staid than that. So I have a feeling if I went back right. and watched it now, I'd enjoy it. But that is an, I think that cover overall, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. And uh, I'm going to give it a solid 3.5 out of 5. All 
Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I, I, I agree with, you know, the vast majority of your points. So, um, but we'll see. We'll see what I come up with. All right, Mr. Oh. Oracle. Give, we know that you're an artist as well. So what, yes. give us your fine point detail analysis of this cover. Do you have uh, a digital? You want me to hold it up here for you? I don't have a digital. I'll bring up a digital next time for the next bit. But if I'm doing too much stuff, okay, no problem. No problem. Uh, let's take a look at the cover here. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Very good uh, rendering of Martin Landau. And I'm, I'm sorry. What's her name again? What's the actress's Barbara name? Bain. Barbara Bain. Barbara Bain, right. And they were married a couple. Barbara they? Bain. They were married too, yeah. by the way. <clears throat> anyway, uh, very good uh, on both their parts. I thought um, portraiture, it's an art in itself. Other than that, it's, you know, a space cover. It's it's definitely showing you that, yes, this is 100% based on the television show, being as here are the actors and the thing that everybody liked so much was those the ships, the eagles flying around, even though like, meh. you know, anyway, um, I thought it was good. Did a good job. Very nice rendered, very well colored. Uh, space 1999 treatment on top. Looks good there. I like the, the way they've angled it off. Like, like it seems like it's going away from you. Gives it, it just gives it that little extra bit of like dimension, right? You didn't have to do it, make it look kind of like it's falling away. Um, so I appreciate that. Right. And I, uh, I thought the cover did uh, did well, and I did, I gave the cover a three and a half. I thought it looked really good. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, I, you know, I, I'm glad you talked about that that trade dress because. That that was that's pretty much I think like the show it was or maybe maybe it was mm -hmm. the second season I'm not sure, but uh, I think it was definitely like that for sure. All right, let me give yeah. you my quick rundown. But I think uh, you guys had some good points here. Um, first of all, this is a painted cover, so you know you have those lush strokes. Uh, it's by like I said by Joe Staten, and um, I honestly I think when you look at the interior art, the cover. Uh, has a much is a much sharper image, um, much more detailed, which is to be expected, right? Especially for a painted cover. Um, I really do like the the moon, the way it's like it takes up almost half the cover, but you can still tell it's the moon. I mean, you can still tell it's a, a planet, you know, uh, um, or, or a celestial body of some sort, right? Uh, and I really do like that trade dress. It it just it just smacks of the show to me. I didn't pick this up until years after the show. Um, so I had I didn't have the first impression, but uh, I really like that. Just like Miracle said, you know, it's like it's that's got those kind of futuristic lettering. Remember, this is 1975, folks. Okay, when this came out, so this is futuristic for that era, right? And it does have that sort of, um, uh, I guess, uh, it, it sort of uh, suggests movement, right, away like that, like a trail, like a vapor trail, perhaps. I don't like that little box with with Commander Koenig in there. He, he looks, you know, no, no insult to you, unruly, but he looks Simeon like in there, you know. Um, <laughs> just, I, I wish they would have done something a little more dynamic than just having him there with a phaser or, or that whatever the pistol is, you know. I'm not crazy about that. Um, I really, I like the eagle. I wish I could see the whole eagle, more like profile like rather than. I guess it's coming out of the moon. That makes sense. And there's something shooting it back there, which is not in the comic, but. It does happen. Sorry, my 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 internet comes in and out. Um, so I do like that. Um, it is a striking cover. I think he got Commander Koenig a hundred percent. That is a man. That is just a likeness like you wouldn't believe. And I think he got Barbara Bain like ninety percent, eighty five percent. The cheekbones are a little bit higher on uh, Barbara Bain than that. But yeah, you know, honestly, if if I knew nothing about it and I saw this comic this cover, uh, it would attract me because I'm a sci-fi guy, you know? So I gave it a slightly higher score than you guys. I gave it a four. Um, I just thought it was just that little much better than than most of the covers of, at the time, especially for a sci-fi guy. I don't like this box up here, but it, doesn't detra it detracts some, but not enough for me to knock it down a grade. So I give it a four. I imagine um, that was we don't have own. genome here, I guess I'm going to... 
That was their stab at imitating Marvel's corner box art. Maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, they, they, it, I mean, they, they did a lot of that kind of stuff, but you know, they could have put something better than just have commander Koenig with a, you know, and that his face is not well done at all. Um, but anyway, all right. So I'm like, let me put the scores here because we don't have, we don't have genome. So we gotta, we gotta make it manual here. Uh, so you guys both had 3.5s, right? Yes. We got to do math yeah, the old-fashioned way, dang it. The old, yeah, no kidding. Just remember, oh, you are man. a calculator. You can do it. I, uh, I am a calculator, but not a good one. <laughs> oh, man. All right, hold on. Let me just let me just finish. Okay, let's go to the story, guys. Um, let's, let's, let's get away from the art for a second. Let's go to the story. Um, again, Rick, written by... Nicholas Cootie, all right. Uh, Nicola, I'm sorry, Nicola Cootie. I don't know why I call him Nicholas. Um, I, I had, a, I have a friend named Nicholas. I, I spoke to not long ago, I guess, but that could be it. So, miracle. Let's go down to you. And okay, let's go to the story. What did you think about this? Is uh, that, was this something that made sense for this kind of comic, or is something is this something that really belonged in the deep six, not the upper outer space? <laughs> Oh, All right. hold on! I forgot something. <clears throat> I forgot. I forgot the, the chat. The chat grade. Oh my gosh! All right, sorry. Yeah, okay, sorry. wait. Totally. Thank yeah, you, no wonder I was kind of surprised. It's my for turn. putting that line there. Oh my god! I'm so sorry. Okay, I even forgot to explain the rules. I'm so crazy. All right, remember, guys, this is graders' notes. We 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 grade on five categories: cover, story, art, concept, and overall. We. We we go from zero to five point with half points. So you can you can say one point five, two point five, three, four, anything between zero and five. Okay. So I forgive me for not explaining that. I got a little bit too excited there, but you know, the, the veterans know the score here, right? So just like us, give us a score. We'll compile it and do an average grade, and that will go into the annals of the graders' notes calculation history uh thank you again for reminding me guys <laughs> sorry about that let me uh let me get a uh hold on a second let me get something real quick make this easier what if you? i don't kill myself that is Please don't look at that. look at him it's so warm down there he's wearing shorts so, dave you say what this is what do you on? mean georgia you you got nothing how, what, Georgia's pretty warm. That's all I got to say. Georgia's dead. Not warm. at the moment. Well, <laughs> then you got to put up with it for a few days. Oh, Jesus. boy. All right. Here we go. We got Las Cruces with a four. We got Gore Vidal with a four. We got Jackson Roy Kirk with a three. Three. Is that it? Come on, you can see the cover, guys. You don't need to actually have the comic to grade the cover, at least. All right, Nauman comes in with three. a three. All right. Anybody else? Hey, Steve, how you doing? Steve? I love Disney and comics it's in here. Don't be afraid. We won't bite. We don't criticize you. We'll criticize each other. You're don't allowed you to have that. your own opinion. All right, well... <laughs> right. Well, we'll give him another couple seconds here. Otherwise, we'll we will cut it off. It looks like it'd be a three point five. Let's give him another couple seconds here, and then we'll go to the story. And man, I'm like out of sorts today. So, Dave, you say this is on Amazon? At least up here it is. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give it a try. I really am. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It is it is on Amazon. I saw some episodes. Yeah, it's okay. also on YouTube. If you want, you know, see it on YouTube. But well, I'm sure it's probably on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not really like the whole thing. It's like kind of what do they call it when they frame it off? You know. 
formatted. Okay. All right. So the chat screen. score is 3.5. Yeah, right. Formatted to fit your screen. Right, right. Uh, the chat. 3.5. All right. So let's get on to the story, guys. Um, again, just a reminder, this was... An adapt the the first chapter is an adaptation of the first episode, very truncated, and then the other one, the uh, second the second part is a original story. Okay, but both by Nicola Cutie. All right, Dave, give us your analysis, my friend. Okay, so like, I guess the story is pretty like pretty much based on the first episode, right? Kind of a direct adaptation, a little bit. But then they kind of branch off from that and uh, go their own way with the, with the story about the slugs. Get into that. Let's start off with toxic waste exploding on the moon and the moon being hurled off into space. Right. And I was like, what? Okay, toxic waste can't explode. It certainly isn't going to explode from a big magnet. And if it did explode with enough force to shoot the moon out of there, it would. The whole moon would just obliterate in an instant, right? Anyway, we'll ignore the, the science and physics of all of what happened. Um, what? But when the, there was like a part of the comic book that just was like, what? Because um, the moon goes shooting off, right? And everybody's like, oh, no, the G-forces. And they're kind of pinned down and stuff. Okay, well, if the moon just suddenly took off in one direction, yeah, there'd be a lot of G-force and moon base alpha. And... and they talked to Commander Koenig there, and they're like, should we get ready for evacuation and go back to Earth? He's like, no, Earth is lost. And that's the only <laughs> explanation you get. I was like, wait a minute, what? You didn't even, like, try the radio or anything like that? Like, you know, the Earth wasn't hit. I mean, I'm sure the Earth is fine. Like, having the moon, uh, if the moon suddenly disappeared off of Earth, it would cause a lot of problems, a lot of problems, because, you know, it's a balanced <laughs> ecosystem. But it certainly wouldn't just immediately extinguish everybody, right? Like, oh no, the moon's gone. Ah, and we all turn to dust, right? Like, but no, he's just off and he's gone. <laughs> why? Shut up. I'm the commander. That's why. We're not going back. We need to go out in space and find a new home. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> a few days later, they're in another solar system. So the moon must have been just hurtling out of there like fast, <laughs> so fast. Like, a couple of couple times the speed of light at least um but they they slow down the moon and somehow go on to this planet and there's just like hey everything's cool there's vegetation and maybe we could live here and then there's like these weird dumb looking like mongoloid kind of caveman guys that come and attack this big slug this big green slug um wow I was like, okay, okay, this is kind of tropish. We're getting it, like, it's a little typical. And then, oh no, one of the slugs grabbed what's her name and trope number, you know, five. She goes down the hole with this thing and they go after her, right? And, you know, they didn't explain why he couldn't go back to Earth. But as soon as he jumps in the hole, he's like, it's a good thing these th these walls aren't sheer or we'd never be able to climb down it. Yeah, thanks for point <laughs> pointing that out, right? Like, And I was like, wait a minute. You can explain how these guys climb down a hole, but you don't explain. Never mind. Um, there's little bits of that throughout the story. So some of the dialogue is a little bit off. Like The whole story is very tropish. It very much harkens back to those 50s and 60s, like maybe even like 40 sci-fi, right? Where the damsel in distress and then you get your group of space marauders and, or, you know, the, the heroic captain and crew go off after her. You know, I, I mean, that's even the the basis for King Kong, right? So, you know, that was a, a sci-fi movie from the 1920s. So this is uber tropish that this happens. And of course, the big surprise that everybody can see coming from the whole way is that it's not these big giant green slug guys that's the bad guys it's the mongoloid guys right and the big slug guys are super intelligent people that want to help the space 1999 guys by turning them into slugs and i'm like well why do why, if I, what, they don't explain why they have to be turned into slugs right like he's just like no 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 that's not a good idea what why can't you just live there 
as people like just hanging out like the 311 people that got shot off in moon base alpha and i mean i know during the show if you're a co-pilot on the show you're dead meat those are the kind of the red shirts of this uh series mm -hmm. so that tick that ticker of crew must have dropped quite a bit over the two years of worth of episodes that went on but yeah this comic book i was like why do they have to be slugs why why what's going on we're like no you just keep your planet we're out of here and they go back to Moonbase alpha and like easily catch up to it in the eagle even though it must be hurtling through space at a fantastic rate of speed um to be reaching other solar systems already they're just like hang out we'll be back in a minute you know as the movie goes hurtling by this other planet which also doesn't like cause any trouble for this planet right as the as the moon comes real close to it uh you know the moon's like far from here man like three hundred thousand miles away or something and it has a big effect on our planet right it's gravity all that kind of stuff has a big effect on our planet so these guys like snug right into an orbit jump off on the ship and then go visit their stuff anyway the comic must continue so off they go back on the moon base self and fly away like i said it's very tropish um but I mean, so was the show right i mean if you really really like i know you guys are looking through it through very nostalgic eyes right but in 1975 i was two years old right i wasn't allowed to watch 19 space 1999 and i never even saw this show until i was probably in my 20s right? i didn't even knew the show that even existed and i think they have like a sci-fi channel here in canada uh like space or whatever and they played the reruns of it on that and i ended up watching a few and but i was like yeah i must have been like 25 or so when i the first time i saw it the only time i've seen it I wasn't like i can remember one with like some big like monkey crazy beast guy kind of attacking the crew and there was there was lots of people dying explosions it was okay but i don't see it with the same rose-colored eyes that you guys do uh to me it's trying to take the place of like much better sci-fi TV shows like Star Trek that came along before that and stuff. Anyway, uh, for the story, definitely oh, where my pad go? story I gave it my lowest grade. Uh, not I wasn't happy with the story. It was way too far fetched and way overdone time and time again. And I gave the story a one point five. So not an, a, a, a fair yep. assessment <laughs> yeah I, i'd say so i honestly i couldn't dis disagree with much of anything you said honestly uh, but i did have a, a slightly different perspective let me put it that way um all right so i guess i'll take this next um since you know we're going <laughs> clockwise here so <laughs> yeah the story is man it's it's razor thin right i mean it's the, the pseudoscience is so far gone, but so it was in the show. You know, I even a, even eleven year old Metarog knew that if somehow nuclear waste exploded, even though there's no fission there, whatever, it would obliterate the moon. I mean, it wouldn't, and certainly it wouldn't send it hurtling and without any damage to the base that's on it. You know, um, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, you have to, you know, you have to sort of release logic at that point and sort of try to soak it in, right? Um, I, I enjoyed the show just because it was science fiction at a time where, you know, I was trying to figure out what it is that I wanted to do, right? And there was a time that I wanted to be a scientist, you know, um, <laughs> but you know that never happened, of course. So I, I really just started to engrossing myself in it. But this particular comic here, that first little chapter is really a very truncated um, uh, first episode, right? Which was called Breakaway, I do believe. And yeah, the the there, there was a, a fear that that breaking the moon out of their orbit would have destroyed the Earth uh, rotation and magnetic fields. So that was kind of true, you know. That part of, that's that part of the science may have been true, right? Um, and then you, and then, yeah, but it, everything is reacted to and in, like instantaneously without a lot of, you know, forethought, you know, without a lot of thinking through things. Um, and then there, the two seasons were very different, but 
we'll talk about this comic first. The, 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 the main story, as, as, as Miracle was talking about, is, you know, it, it's, it's, I've read this story so many times before, right? You know, you, you, you go into an alien civilization and you, you're, you already have a preconceived notion that because it looks monstrous, that it is a monster, right? But, you know, think about, you know, a, an ant or a lizard. It looks at us and it, we're monsters. So it's all perspective, right? And so I knew right, right at the beginning, right smack, right, right, right when, I, when that first thing came out of the ground, I was like, that is not a monster. That is what we, they want us to believe is a monster. And again, we're talking about, you know, how it is that we perceive things, right? Without evidence, without having any foreign, any knowledge of this particular species. And when, as it, as the story goes through, it just becomes more and more tropish, like Miracle said, right? That being said, though, you know, at the end, you know, where, where you, where obviously we knew she was going to survive because she's in, she's in other issues, right? So right there, you already have, you already know that something's going on and yeah, it's, it's razor thin. It's, I've read this story a hundred thousand times before. It's it's kind of preachy in that sense, you know. And then at the end, you know, the, there's a decision to be made. Are is it is it better to take the sure thing, which is we can live here now, but we have to live as slugs, or take our chances hurtling through space, where we may find a planet that's habitable. The odds are a trillion to one, but it it may happen. You know, and the, you know, and they make a decision instead of you know saying, well, maybe other people might want to, you know, take this deal. No, they's like, no, we're just bye. You know, we're out of here. You know, um, and that's the nature of these comic book stories, right? That they 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 fit the the plot for you know the ultimate end. You know, you have to have the crew guy, the the, the technicians on the base, so you can't have a whole bunch of them staying behind. Um, so you know that you know that going going forward. That being said, for what it is, for the, for what it is, the type of comic it is, and and based on the adaptation of that first part and the expansion of, you know, the show on the second part, I still enjoyed it. You know, I knew it was coming. You know, you had the psycho babble from you know uh, per, uh, Victor. Uh, you had the authoritarian. You know, uh, you know we, we're. Well, I know what I'm doing from Commander Koenig, and then you have to rescue the, the damsel in distress. It's it's a classic story, right? Classic elements of it. Uh, I still enjoyed it. Yeah, the the the, the actual um, you know the actual verbiage is not bad. It's 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 not. They're not really talking down to you. They're sort of trying to make sense of it, um, but the plot not so much. Uh, that being said, I gave it a two point five. I mean. For what it is, it's an average comic. It's not, you know, like like Gore was saying, yeah, like four people into space and cosmic rays and they come back with superpowers. Is that really that much far-fetched than this? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I still enjoyed it at that level. So I give it a 2.5. I, I can I can get behind that. Because listen, the, the, <laughs> the 11-year-old kid me would have would have give this a four. This would have been the shit, baby. But reading it as an adult, <laughs> I had the same exact. Back then, when I was you know when I was first exposed to science fiction, anything in space was cool. Now I prefer more grounded, hard SF. You know that's what I I prefer to read. But uh, right. As as the, that's what struck me. Y'all have already gone over it. The moon just hurtling i mean apparently they haven't aged a, a day and already they're in another solar system checking out another planet that's a neat trick if you can do it but uh in defense of that that's just a storytelling mechanism i'm going to give you the ray bradbury defense he was at a, a science fiction <laughs> convention in the late 60s and some young kid comes up to him and says, hey, Mr. Bradbury, you know, on page 78 of the Martian Chronicles, when you have Phobos rising in the east, and Bradbury goes, yeah, and the kid goes, you got it all wrong. Phobos will rise from the north. And the Ray Bradbury defense is, so I punched him. 
<laughs> Which is exactly what he should have done. Oh man, classic, classic. But it was, it was, it right. was the story. Um, this story was just, I'm sorry, weak all around. It's probably better a better effort than I could put on page if somebody said, "Hey, write me a space 1999 story." But uh, I definitely wouldn't sign my real name to this. Y'all have already picked every bit of meat off this bone. I'm just going to go ahead, and I totally agree with Miracle. I'm going to give it a 1.5. 1.5, okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I do see it with rose-colored glasses. I, 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 I'll, I'll admit that, right? I mean, like, don't, my like show, you and a whole bunch of other was people. so cool to me at the time. Hey, Dr. Von Chilla, how you doing? How you doing, John? Great to see you here, my friend. All right, so the show has a some big miracle, following. Oh, I know it does. I know it does. I mean, not nothing like Star Trek, you know. But I thought the eagle oh. was the coolest thing myself back then. Oh I yeah, had the model oh, yeah. and everything, you know. But did you remember you? that? Yeah, All right. It was, it was so, a... if by some miracle somebody in the chat has read this. <laughs> uh, we'll get to you in a minute, Wayne. If, if for some reason you guys have actually read this, give us a chat. Give us a, your score. I'm super curious if anybody else has read this and if they have remembered it in some fashion. Um, I, I tend to doubt it, but we'll see. And you know, back then when I was buying comics, I, I read quite a few Charlton. I never picked this one up. I don't remember seeing it. But, you know, spinner racks and drugstores were so hit and miss. You might see Superman three months in a row and then not see it for three yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pe people don't know how good they have it now, where you can pre-order and go to the comic shop. and No. Back then, I mean, I had to sometimes go to three, four, seven, elevens. Um, and when I say I went, I would harass my my uncle or my my mother to t thank god that we lived in, in central miami where there were about five or six within about a five mile radius and that was the only way i could you know continue collecting you know uh, you know runs uh you're absolutely right rain uh, like atlas comics i i love the destructor i got number one i went everywhere to find that number two they didn't have it everywhere to find number three didn't have it four they had so I was missing two and three for like decades until, you know, I found the comic shop in the late seventies. Me and this, I lived in Virginia beach at the time and me okay. and two buddies would ride our bikes every Saturday and it hit every convenience store within five or six miles of us. Cool. <laughs> Try collecting in rural Mississippi in 71. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that must have been tough, John. You're right. That must have been tough. Uh, okay, it looks like only one like score, and that was Jackson Roy Kirk 2.5. Yeah, I, I mean, I lived in Mississippi for a couple of years, and uh, rural Mississippi, you have to go miles and miles before you can even find, like, a grocery store sometimes. It's really something. Not like Florida where there's, except for, like, around the Everglades, everywhere, you know, pretty much you can find something. All right, so looks like 2.5 from the chat. It was the only one from Jackson Roykirk. Uh, actually, he broke it down, interestingly enough. Let's look at this. He broke it down, the adaptation four, and the main story one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, it's, it's, yeah. I know it's not that good, trust me. I know, I'm just, I'm just rose-colored glasses for sure. All right, so let's go to the art guys um again joe staten did the art the interior uh and the cover i'm gonna make myself big and just show a little bit and you know and then i'll i'll let you guys go through it um joe staten is it, let me just say is a favorite of mine but not so much for sci-fi right you know nice little splash page a nice little you know angled moon with the moon base alpha there okay and the eagle out here the, the thing with Staten is that his pencils are not that tight, right? So what what happens, what, what keeps 
keeps occurring to me is that when it, when you're talking about a science fiction uh, comic, to me it has to be a little bit more, you know, straighter lines, a little you know brighter, a little bit different than you know normal, right? But his style is a little bit cartoony, uh, for lack of a better word, um, and, and that's why he is like to me much better. Um, much a better artist in comics like E-Man and like the horror titles where you have these, you know, where you have these like dysmorphic monsters, right? And you have E-Man, you know, stretching in all kinds of shapes and globules and so forth. But when it comes to this comic, it's it's just a little mushy to me, you know? It's not, it doesn't have those sharp edges that I expect. Um, the eagle is not badly done here. Uh, he also did the inking on this, by the way. So there's no excuse as too far as saying, "Well, this is this is in incorrectly." And his faces, they 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 are not that distinguishable. I think Koenig and and um, Helena Russell are a little bit, but the rest of the cast, I I didn't really. I, he doesn't quite have them correctly. They're just a little bit off, you know. Um, panel layouts are average at best. Um, I do like I do like the way he did this monster here on this page. Really yes. cool looking monster. Look at that. You know that's his forte right there. Those kinds of um, beings, he does those very well. The tentacles, the you know the kind of you know just the size differences, the 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 lumpiness, the veins even appear for lack of a better term. He does that very well. Um, but a lot of the backgrounds are also kind of basic. Um, and and not and I, I'm not blaming Staten for this, but Charlton had very poor quality inks and paper. So some things look almost like a little bit out of focus, for lack of a better term. Um, they're just not crisp, not sharp, um, just... Just a little bit off, you know. Uh, the color, the color separation is not great. Some things are really bright. Some things are really dark. Um, but to me, uh, he he he's there's a lot to 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 draw in this comic. You're talking about the 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 moon, that pearl world, the underground, the monsters, the the gulag, the gulags, which are like the apish kind of beings that are up there. Um, again, you know, nothing special here. Um, I, I wish in a sense that hit, that he could draw a little sharper, maybe like on the cover, but it just, there's not a lot of distinction in the faces and his anatomy. I'm sure Mr. Miracle is going to rip that to shreds, but, but yeah, not, not that good. Um, the legs sometimes are bent in really odd fashions. Um, the expressions are sometimes just weird, for lack of a better term. So I'm not going to keep harass, haranguing him or anything like that. But just be it known that I am a big fan of his, but just not so much for this style of comic. That being said, um, I still enjoyed it. It still tells a story. It's not like super distracting, except some of those anatomies and the faces are off quite a bit. Um, so I gave it a 2.5 just because I think that he did his best and considering this is not his genre really um uh, i still i still think it's a, a credible art job for lack of a better term so 2.5 for me well so I'm, he did I'm, it. Like you, I'm a huge I'm gonna... staten fan huge staten fan it's certainly not the most expensive book i own but my e-man number one is my favorite comic it's it's in my top two or three and whoa, are you ever correct? I'm with man? you. I even remember Char the Charlton comics even smelled a little different than the normal newsprint of Marvel or DC. And it was like sometimes you could almost see entire wood chips <laughs> in the paper. But that was that was easily the best panel was of that that full page spread of the alien. Hold on, let me make it big. Hold on. Let me make it big. Hold on. Go ahead. Show it again. That panel right there oh, yeah. is worth is worth 
that entire issue. I, I would pay good money to own that ar- original art. And I, I'm not mm. as picky as y'all about most art. I like the cartoony style. I mean, of course, it's got issues with the anatomy and the layout. Uh, to his credit, he does try and fill at least half of the backgrounds with something. And again, if you look at that, look at the stars in the background, the boulders he's put this slug is throwing around. The people are drawn in a competent fashion in the foreground. That that page right there took him a minute, especially if he inked it himself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you're exactly correct. This was not his forte. I mean, look at that. He's got something going on. Every panel is full. That's a plus to me. But this this is not this is not his strong suit. But I did like the way he rendered the eagle, because I can draw people, but I can't draw a building or anything mechanical. It just eludes me. I know there's tricks. <laughs> and ways to go about it. I'm just, I'm not that guy. So uh, I'm going to give it a little bit higher than you did. I'm going to give it a, a very straight up uh, 3.0, a little better than serviceable. And that's probably my fondness for the man coming through. Hey, I understand that. I understand that. Um, let me put this here. I don't think that's out of the question, by the way. I almost gave it a three. Um, except that it just does not fit his particular style, you know. Uh, let me say hi to the gray man, our old uh, Graders Notes brethren here. And I already said hello to Dr. Von Chilla, but I saw Joe down here as well. Hi, Joe. How you doing? Great to see you here. If I, look at this. Hold on. If I was Roger, I'd put them in timeout on the show for two months. <laughs> Oh man, nah. We'll 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 let you we'll let you we'll let you voice your voice your opinion here. Work euphemism for something terrible. Yeah, I don't. I just I'll just call it how it is. All right, Miracle, your turn, my friend. We know that you are a really good artist. I have your Ghost Rider hanging on my Ghost Rider wall here. I see it every day, and I'm still like, man, I couldn't draw that if you tortured me and you, you know, w- would say. <laughs> I, the whole world we've destroyed if, unless you can do something like that i couldn't do it so i value your opinion when it comes to the art quite a bit and kenny's as well and genomes because you guys are all artists but those two are not here so what do you think about the art in this issue well i mean i did like a lot of the background uh most of his anatomy was pretty good right it was that was it he kept in this weird thing where he'd only show half a face and then half a face on the other side of the panel. Um, he did that, or just a close up of an eye and stuff like that. That, that was kind of an odd choice. Um, the aliens look good. That splash page that uh, Unruly was holding up there. Yeah, that was really good, right? Uh, There's a very kind of three quarter first page splash page that looked good. Um, of Moonbase Alpha, like all in kind of a perspective. Uh, that I thought that was good, but yeah, there's a few, there's some few really weird looking people on there where their faces are like, What? What? This guy, why are you making this guy look like E Man? Like his face is all like smooshed out or all wonky. Is this what you're talking wide, about? Like half face on the panel, like that? Half face. I can give you a page number. Um, take a look at page number 20. You can find that one. And you'll see that they're like, you can find that one. Yeah, so, so yeah, some of the faces were a little off. Some of the anatomy was a little oh, off, yeah. and they're trying to do more action stuff. You can guess which one I'm talking about, right? Hey, <laughs> right. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Looks yep. like he's on he's a Zoom out. call with the the camera way down low. He's got his he's got his laptop camera way down low, and <laughs> it's zooming him up. Yep. Um, so yeah, it had its problems, but it wasn't like so bad. I thought uh, the thing I really liked was um, uh, Wendy Fiore's coloring of the of the background. Uh, it, I thought, like you guys were saying, Charlton didn't have the best inks, didn't have the best paper, 
And so I thought her colors still stood out pretty good, even considering the limitations of the stuff that she was doing. Um, there's some real trippy kind of backgrounds in there, which fit with that 1970s sort of disco vibe that was going on, right? Like, so I thought her coloring was really uh, relevant to the time that she's coloring this in. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, she's picking these big mm -hmm. colors, and these colors have come back, and uh, you'll see a lot of artists now using these uh, really big, bold colors like she is in there. So I gave uh, definitely gave a little bit of an extra for her coloring. Um, even though, like, yeah, a little inconsistent with the people. Uh, it's super hard to draw somebody's portrait. It would take forever if you were trying to draw somebody's portrait on each panel. So I thought he did a good sort of cartoonish rendition of Martin Landau uh, that he could travel on. It was good enough that I knew he, I knew it was the character from the show, especially after I saw the cover. Right, I knew that that's that's who he was. So uh, good enough in that sort of regard. Uh, yeah, I gave the interior. A uh, three. And I thought it was uh, got a little bump for the color wow. for me. Yeah. Wow. I, am so I can't believe I gave the lowest grade on this. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I, I'm. You know, I. What I usually do for a miracle uh, is that I like try to re, try to think ahead of time. I had him put a two on this for sure. I said, "There's no way well, he's given higher than a two. But you know, he makes some I good points. He makes some really good points I that even, I didn't consider. I would have given it a two. Two was going to be my grade, but then I was like really impressed with the coloring, and that gave it an extra bump for me. So the artwork itself, like that. Well, let's say hi to illustrations. Uh, got two. Okay. Right. <laughs> let's say hi to my partner for the No Faces chat, Bub Bub's World. How you doing, my friend? And psychedelic yeah. comics. I remember those Space 1990 books. I remember making the U-shaped guns out of the Lego. Oh, yeah. That's right. The pistol oh, that right. kind of went over. Yeah. Cool. 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 The Lego. Their uniforms remind me of the suits to sell in the 70s at Kmart. Hey, that's true. That's true. Those those polyester things. You remember those, Wayne, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Great. Great. All right. Chat, you're up. What did you think about? I mean, I know... I didn't show, you know, a lot of the art here. It, it was kind of tough uh, here with my lighting or whatever. But if you could make an opinion based upon what, what I showed, maybe you've seen it. Maybe you can see it online. Uh, give us your interior art grade. Um, I think we're all pretty close, 2.53, somewhere in there. But maybe you really hated the style or maybe you just really loved it. So uh, let us know. Let us know what you think. Now miracle is there drawing away at something. I, I, I am like, can't wait to see what he comes up with. I can't wait. You can wait. It's not that great. I... <laughs> hey, Captain Comics, how you doing, my friend? Cover slinger uh, extraordinaire. Yes, absolutely. That that theme song was it's it's like a, a, a an earwormy kind of song. It's really cool. You know, they, they even like have where the where the explosion happens, they have like a crescendo. It's really cool. He needed an anchor. <laughs> oh, okay. We got some good scores here. Hold on, let me start writing these down. Oh man. Scores down. Uh, I've got one. I gotta hear this theme song. <laughs> Oh man. All right. Let's see. Looks like we got a three. No, that's the story. All right. A three, a two, a three, a three, and a 2.5. One for not having blank pages, Bob. My gosh. Blank pages. Five, 11, 12, 13.5. All right, let me see what that come out to. So it comes out to 2.25. So we're going to bump it up to 2.5, okay? Is that all right with you guys? Yep. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, that's the, that's the chat grade for the art. 
Uh, oh, look at this. 1.5 for not having a Mark Jeweler. No, that's not their fault. It's not their fault. Did Charlton ever do those adverts? It does not. They, they did. I, I they didn't have inserts, but they had ads. Yeah. They did have ads uh, on the back cover and on the interior sometimes. They did have Mark Jewelers, yeah. But not inserts, not like Marvel's DCs and Archies. Okay. I did a whole video on that, by the way, if anybody's interested. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry, Captain. Sorry, Captain. All right. So, let's go on to the concept. Um. So again, this this one this this particular category is somewhat amorphic. You know, you, you can sort of go with it in different ways. Uh, some people like to go in the marketing aspect. Some people like to go more about just you know was this this whole idea something that was good or was it just a, a like a, a cash grab you know kind of th thing. Um, so let's put it out there uh, and see what happens. Uh, oh, Magic Lasso, how you doing, right? Ryan, how you doing, my friend? Great to see you here. So I think we went back around. So Simeon, what do you think about this concept, my friend? You know, I'm glad you brought that up. I would love to see the pitch meeting for this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So something, 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 and the moon is all of a sudden in an entirely different solar system. Yeah, I love it. I love it. What next? Please. Uh, it was it was the mid to late it was the mid 70s there wasn't a whole lot of science fiction going on on mainstream tv there wasn't even really it was post star wars that science fiction i mean gore mentioned a few that happened around that time logan's run silent running which i think was a couple of years earlier but i mean that was it hollywood might give you one decent science fiction movie a year and there wasn't bupkis on the television screen. So I think it that they had the timing right. And, it, you know, it's it, it, the, the moon hurtling through the space, searching for a different home for these 311, oops, I'm sorry, co-pilot, 310 survivors. That's not a horrible <laughs> concept to hang, you know, a plot of the week kind of show around. But uh, as and as for a comic, you know, hell, it's, a comic could knock that shit out of the park. I mean, basically, they did for what they were working with. But and I'm looking at it through jaded eyes, almost 50 years later, which every part of me is saying, "Oh, this is horrible," but it's not. It's a so for the time. It's a solid comic. So I'm gonna give the concept. I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit on the lenient side and give it a 3.0. Okay. 3.0. Yeah. You make some good points. Uh, hello, Tony. How you doing, my friend? Good to see you here. This, the signature King himself is in. Uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And that, and that's something that you have to sort of consider, right? Because, you know, if you're if a man who's, who just came out of the desert, it's not going to say, oh, I don't like Mountain Dew, right? If he finds Mountain Dew, he's going to drink whatever liquid's around. And when you're a sci-fi fan and there's nothing out there, Logan's Run, Silent Running, those were movies, but there was really no nothing that you could see on a regular basis. Remember this before VC, well, VCRs were just coming out, you know, around there. But you couldn't, and cable was spotty, you know, here and there. So it was, if it was on, it was, it better be in syndication on some channel or else you didn't see it. And, uh, and this was on. So for what it was, to me, it was pretty good. But, you know, you're right. Looking back, it's preposterous, right? All right, Mr. Miracle, drop the, drop the pencils or pens or markers or whatever and give us your concept grade for this, my friend. Uh, well, with the moon flying through space, like, are we, are we given a concept of here let's do a comic based on a tv show because that itself has been done and done and done and done and done and done like long before this space 1999 by charlton by whitman whitman did a ton of this kind of stuff right um marvel got into it dc got into it all kinds of stuff that were movie adaptations 
If you're talking about the concept itself for Space 1999, the moon hurtling through space trying to find a habitable planet, eh, it's a little far fetched, but I, I get you, right? I grew up like, you know, by the time I was getting into science fiction, it was the 80s. Um, Star Wars, right? Like everything was Star Wars for me when I was a kid. So this is no Star Wars. That's for sure. <laughs> um, anyway. So in the concept of like, you know, let's just write an adaptation of a television show of somebody else's idea. It's fine. I mean, they do it to any show that shows any popularity at all. I mean, Dark Shadows, Star Trek, Star Wars. Like, uh, there's a bazillion of them, right? I just could go on and on about uh, how many adaptations they've had. Man from Atlantis got an adaptation comic, I believe. Um, that was a funny show to you. Anyway, Man from Atlantis. Uh, where was I? Sometimes I drift off with these things. Anyway, concept of this book. I think I gave the concept uh, a one. Nothing new going on here, ripping off a, or just, you know, following characters from another show that somebody else created, and then you take over and do there. So it was definitely my lowest score, right, where I gave it a one. And, yeah, nothing new here. I mean, if you're going to give me the concept of Space 1999, I'd probably give it a two if I was dating the concept on the show. You know what I mean? Like a little bit... A little bit weird, a little bit tropish, but apparently that's some good storytelling. I'd have to go back and rewatch a lot of this stuff. Like I haven't seen it in a couple decades, at least a couple decades. So, one, one is my concept grade. So one, one. Okay, all right. Um, well, that's you know, I mean, that, that I can see where you're coming from. Um, I think that's a bit harsh, but you know, you, you know, it, it's it is what it is, right? Uh, we're rose colored. You're more, you know, down there. You know, more more even more like, field. Um, I'm, I'm more of this camp of what? What was the big deal about the show? Like, I I don't think it's as good as a lot of other stuff I've seen. Time tunnel. I was a big fan of the time no. tunnel. I was. Oh yeah, love that. Yeah. I love yeah. that show. I love Rivernell. Right that show. So. Yeah. Maybe, Land. maybe we'll tunnel comic someday. Land before Land time. Of Lost the in giant. space. Oh, Land of Land the, the Giants. Giant. Yep. Yeah, Didn't that come that. like before or after time tunnel? I seem to recall they were pretty much contemporary. Late late sixties. Oh, late. But yeah, I've that's seen. that's about right. That's about right. Okay. Uh. Uh, okay, let me let me just give you my concept grade, and then we'll we'll wrap it up with the overall. Um, you know, what I'm I'm considering various factors here, right? One is that they didn't know this show was going to be any good. This could have been a, a two or three episode flop, and they're stuck with this property. Charlton is right, paying whatever royalties or whatever fees that they had to to get this. Um, so they took a chance on it. And I like that. Now, they also took a chance on Six Million Dollar Man, and that turned out to be a hit show. They also did Emergency, and that was, I wouldn't know about a hit show, but it was a popular show, you know? So, and they also have magazines for those. So, they're taking a chance here. So, I give them a little credit, a little courage here, because you didn't really know how this was going to work out, right? Um, yeah, the, the, the concept of the show is... As we said, pseudoscience is preposterous, but it's not supposed to make sense. It's supposed to be entertainment, right? If you start overanalyzing everything in a show, everything is, forget it. Everything is totally, uh, it just can't happen, right? Um, but I like the fact that they took the chance, first of all, that they put Joe Staten on it is perhaps the problem that I have, right? Now, now Burn, I think, was just starting with Charlton. And then later on, he did do the art here. The burn issues are, mwah, right? They're really good. Now, he did Doomsday Plus One, which I know Wayne knows about. And again, that that fits more into the sci-fi burn mold, right? 
but I have to judge this comic as it is of uh, the concept for this comic. So for me, uh, I do like, I think this had a lot of potential. Uh, the science is uh, ahead. Uh, I mean, just behind, you know, just not even considering that a, a celestial body hur hurtling through the universe is old, has so much potential, right? The pitfalls and the, the critical thinking involved are li literally endless just to survive. Right. Um, and it had, you know, very good actors, I thought. And in here you have the, those same characters, right, which haven't been fleshed out here. But I think when they do, you can see that they all have a, a lot of conflict ahead of them because they think a little differently. Right. Um, so to me, I think this had potential if it was if you had the right creative team and you had the right publisher, which maybe this wasn't, but if you had all those kinds of things converge, this was, I think, a solid concept. So I'm with I'm with Wayne on this. I gave it above average because I think the potential was there. Uh, yeah, an adaptation is an adaptation is an adaptation, but they, they the adaptation here was only that first chapter. The rest, you know, they they did a brand new story, which was not, as far as I recall, not really any part of the series at all. Um, and I so I give them credit for that, although the story was not that strong, certainly. So I give it a three as well. I just think that this is not a cash grab. They're trying to, they're trying to come up with a new genre here with you know six million dollar man, the adaptation genre. I'm saying with emergency, uh, wheelie and the chopper bunch, but that was a you know cartoon. A few others, right? And like you said, Gold Key had, they licensed everything. You know, I mean they had all kinds of stuff. And I think Charlton, knowing that Marvel was now doing the superheroes and they were, you know corner in the market there they had to go expand it to other territories their horror was good and their adaptation i think that they i think this was a good concept for them just maybe not the right execution of it at this point so i give it a three and i'll put myself down there for that all right all right let's go to the chat um again concept you don't really need to have read the comic i suppose i mean you can sort of tell from what we've discussed here uh whether this is something that you know you think was a good um chance by the publisher or is it are they just throwing stuff against the wall see what sticks anything like that will work so give us your chat there your concept grades please yeah i definitely see this more as a let's see if it sticks kind of comic <laughs> Hey, have we ever done a uh, gold key? Have we ever done a gold know. key? I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, by the way, we'll after this that, after yeah. this chat grade, we're going to ask the chat what comic they want for next time because Genome sent me two, well, you guys were in the IG, two possibilities, and then the chat will decide between them. All right, didn't, see what we got here. Three didn't Gold Key, Gold Key did Magnus Robot Fighter and Dr. Solar, right? Yes. I love Magnus, man. I, sure I did. love those covers. I love the stories. Turok, Dinosaur Hunter. Russ Manning, right? Tons of movie adaptations and stuff. Star Trek. And... Yeah, Valley of the Dinosaurs. Korg. Dinosaurs. Um, no, no. Korg, Korg and Valley Dinosaurs were Charlton. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I can't, can't get my mind off of Charlton here. <laughs> um, yeah. Gold Key was everything. They, they, they tried everything. Everything. Did tons of horror stuff, right? Boris Karloff, How Was the Mystery. Right. That's right. I have a few of those. Thriller. Yeah. Wow, we got a lot of concept grades here. Hold on. 3, 2.5. 3, 2.5. 3, 2.5. Sorry, first time in the chat. What are we grading? We're grading the concept of the comic, which is, again, it's not, it's hard to explain. It's just based upon whether you think that this, the creation of this particular issue uh, by the by the company uh, is, was it, you know, again, you can look at it from many angles. Was it a, a was it a, a cash grab? 
Was it like miracle things they're throwing up against the wall, or was it something that was a higher concept, something that we, that 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 in the in in the if you look at it just as a plain comic book, is was it a good idea? Yes or no? That's it. Yeah, Tarzan. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Tarzan. You guys should do crossed. Hmm. I, I, I don't think, hmm. I'm pretty sure you would not want to read that, sir. Yeah, no. Crossed is out. <laughs> We're not doing that kind of adult kind of Okay, content. take care, Roman. Uh he's gotta go bookworm. All right, thank you for the suggestion, Candy. That's a great suggestion. Uh it's actually on my list for the future. So uh take care, my friend. Good to see you. Good to have you here. All right, looks like it's all the grades list. are in. Hey Russ, how you doing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Let me let me oh okay. Got it. Okay, two point five. Okay, I, put, I got you down, psychedelic. All right, let me total this up and see what we got. Give Miracle a little more time there. A little more time. <laughs> Give me just a little more time. <laughs> Nalo. How was that? Give me just Man. a little more time. <laughs> you guys are like just like my dad. Break out the song. Songs that nobody <laughs> heard of. Hey now. What? Hold on a second. All right. The, the concept grade came out to a three on the nose. So guess what, Miracle? What's up? Wayne and I know what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, Jeez. we haven't hit overall uh, yet. No, that's true. That's true. That's true. We haven't hit that out yet, but it's coming. It's coming. Um, let me let me do the chat overall while we're, while we're here. Hold on. Oh man, 2.5, 2.53. Looks like the overall for the chat is a three. Okay, so the chat, what um, we we don't ask you to grade the overall. We we just average all your previous scores, um, so that you don't have to worry about that part. Okay, all right. So overall, um, okay, I'll start with this one, and then we'll finish up with miracle. Um, you know. My, my scores were four, two and a half, two and a half, three for the concept. I think it comes out to about three something. And I'm going to go with three. Um, I'll tell you why. Although the weaker parts were the interior, the art, and the story, in my opinion, um, I, I think that the concept was just slightly better than average. And that cover was really pretty striking to me. Um, so I have to elevate, even though I give more credence to those two middle, sco middle scores, I, I got to bump it up to a three because it just, it just feels like a three, a three comic to me. Uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't, I, there's nothing off putting about it. Um, and again, as a science fiction nerd, um, it, it's something that I had to collect, right? Just like Doomsday plus one, Logan's run, all those. Um, so maybe I am bumping it up a little bit more than I should. I actually am close to doing a 3.5 just because I did enjoy the heck out of this whole series with the burn, but I'm only going to give this comic this overall grade, right? Um, there's nothing really wrong with it. I, it's just that it could have been much better with a slightly more, you know, sharper artist and a slightly more, uh, in, inventive story rather than a, a really taking parts of stories we've read over and over you know if you if you're if you're into this genre before so many times so i gave it a three guys and i think that's i think that's fair based upon the average of my scores and about my gut feeling about the comic three all right so, i gave the I gave the, cover, I gave the cover a 3.5 the, in, the story of 1.5 and the concept and art threes. So I think that would come out close to a three. I'm, I'm happy with that grade, Roger. A 3.0 for me, too, overall. Okay. Thank you, my, my friend. Oh, you know, I forgot to show the comics, but we'll do it after this one. <laughs> 
All right, Mr. Miracle. Uh, Hit us with your yeah. best shot, my friend. It's definitely, def you definitely got the senility crew in with you tonight on Greater's Notes. <laughs> we never remember what's going what. Um, overall, you know, I I know some the art had a little bit of problems, but I I did quite enjoy the art in this book. Um, I can see why you guys are a fan of this uh, artist. Uh, definitely, uh, he showed some good stuff in there. A little bit of anatomy problems or whatever, but generally good. The cover really good. Um, it just the, the whole story of it fell down. Uh, the concept of it kind of fell down for me. Would I recommend this book for someone else to read? Probably not. It's one that would come up to mind. If I saw, if I ran into a buddy at a comic, uh, you know, comic show, and he, I saw it in his stack of books, I wouldn't be like, why did you buy that? You're so stupid. I'd just be like, well, you know, it's a number one or whatever. You get it. Um, I wouldn't recommend you go out and buy it. It's, never, it's not going to be a very overly collectible thing, I don't think. Anyway, uh, what did I say the overall was? 1.5, right? Has to have a good story for me to really like this book, right? And I just don't think the story in this book was all that great. It was way too far-fetched, way too tropish, and the dialogue was weird. I just hated it that they didn't explain the big plot points of the story, but then they would explain how they could climb down a hole. You know what I mean? Like, it was just like... Good point. Good point. You know, you could have saved, you could have saved me that pen. I the idea that those guys couldn't climb down the hole hadn't popped into my head at all. They were just climbing down a hole and you got to trust your artist to kind of show Rocky bridges or whatever that these guys are climbing down. Anyway. Yeah. I give it a one and a half. I wouldn't recommend this book. It's not, it ha it's definitely not my favorite. It's oh, not this, the worst grade of ever. That miracle's talking about right here. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and that's, and, and honestly, it's not that well done because you really can't see the slope in that angle that well. So, yeah, uh, good weird. point. Good point. Anyway, good point. One All and right. a half. Be before you show, one and All a right. half. Okay. Before you show your drawing, let's see what the chat thinks about in two weeks on Mister. Hold on, hold on, you don't don't jump the gun. Uh, <laughs> In two weeks on, on Genome Presents channel. By the way, all the links to all the creators are, are in the description below. So I'd like the chat to pick which one they want to see out of these two. We have Amazing Spider-Man 346. I believe this is an Eric Larson cover. And uh, man, that cover is something else. Um, this is from, what, 1990 or so? 1991. Okay. So that is your first possibility the second one is avengers west coast 69 with the drag down no hold barred battle between hawkeye and the u.s agent i mean they really battle in this issue uh they've they've had a feud going on for many many issues and this sort of brings it to a head so pick in the chat which one you want avengers west coast or asf All right, let me put myself back here. Uh huh. Avengers West Coast. Avengers. We got two Avengers. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Hey, Wayne, <laughs> you don't count. I mean, you do, but not when it comes to picking the comic. <laughs> Can I pick Space 1999 again? <laughs> Listen, maybe in the future we'll do one of the burn issues. I think though that grade will come out a little bit different okay so stay tuned gore all right we got okay hold on i looks like avengers is winning guys is that is that right yeah avengers is winning. okay all right so in two weeks we're going to be doing avengers west coast number 69 read your copy pick it up at dollar bin wherever you need to do and be here in two weeks genome presents channel link below hit the notification bell all right guys before we go and we Go around. Let's see what Mr. Mir what, why am I putting myself so low? I didn't draw anything. Mr. Miracle. Okay, my friend, hit us. I didn't know what else to draw for this. Do you? Oh, very oh, nice. Oh, the eagle has landed. 
Oh man, that is so cool, there. Miracle. You did that all tonight? Yeah. Is that all you did tonight, or did you have something prepped before? No, just me and the rulers. It's it, it's like oh, man. I'm really saying this. Awesome, I'm I'm good at doing technical stuff. There's little tricks you can do with it. It goes pretty quick. I, mean, I just had to draw a bunch okay, of lattice okay. patterns on the back of it. Actually, drawing the ship, like the the ship, the eagle, it's just not. I never liked it all that much, really. I just thought like it's just this weird. Oh, you see, I really did. I really did like that ship. Uh, I did. Too, I mean, but you know maybe what? I liked it because I had the model, and the model was awesome, you know. And oh, we're maybe. definitely so. we're we're not as jaundiced because for us that was oh it was something brand new and it was cool and it was different. And there's been so many iterations of sleeker ships since then. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. 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 It was, it was, it was very different than, than most. And, and, and also it, it could carry things underneath it, like made sense, right? How it was designed, which had that part in the middle that was off centered kind of so that you could carry cargo. I mean, it had a lot of cool yeah. little parts that you wouldn't, you know, necessarily think about. Hey, Kenneth, how you doing? Ship, right? All right. So let's wrap it up. We're a minute and 20 minutes. Yeah. We, yeah. Sort of. Um, Mr. Unruly, what what are you up to? Are you on anybody else's channel coming up uh, soon, or are you? Um, not... Sa Saturday <laughs> night, I'll be on Kevin's Superpower Review. What's that comic book? I was on about six week, three four months ago. It was a lot of fun. It's just guys sitting around BS and showing off comic. Oh yeah, I love Kevin. It's so such a cool guy. Such a cool guy. Yeah, I will do that. I think I've seen that, by the way, but I will definitely do that. The Eagle. Mr. Miracle, I haven't seen Yo. a video from you in a while, sir. I haven't done what, it in a while. What's up with you? I know. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know. Just taking a break and haven't been motivated to come off break yet. I will. I will. <laughs> Just, okay. I don't know. I'll get it together. Okay. 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 Well, it's, it's the, I'm just saying, you know, we know your fans, your fans miss you. you. I know I get emails all the time. So, okay. Good, what about, good. what about you, Rod? It's, it's good. It's nice to be wanted, right? Yes. Me. Um, well, um, I think, I think we're going to have a no faces chat this Monday. We haven't had one in a couple of weeks. So that will be on Bub's world's channel. And a week from Sunday, I'm I'm running a very special competition video with Valentine's themed comics or Valentine's dating love all that kind of stuff themed comic Romance. themed comics and I have five competitors five competitors booked for that so it's a week from Sunday on February sixth uh, I'll give you a hint one of our panelists here on the Greater's Notes is going to be on that stream, include besides it's myself. Me. So I definitely want to check it out. And Jackson Roy Kirk will be moderating. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's all I can say. Last time we did a Christmas show, I never laughed so hard on the screen in my life. Um, it was just a lot of fun with these guys. So definitely check it out. I'll probably set up the stream next week. So put it on your reminder and so forth because it's going to be fun. I've I have I have tricks up my sleeve. I I don't let them know all the categories beforehand, you know. So they have to sort of figure out. And sometimes they'll they'll in between their you know when they're when it's their turn, you'll see shuffling and people moving around. It's hilarious stuff. It's really hilarious stuff. Yeah, thank you, thank you, my friend. And that's it, guys. Um, thanks thanks again for you know showing up and. And doing your stuff, yeah, your analysis as always is on point. Um, different perspectives, but you know that's that's why we do Graders Notes, right? Because yeah. everybody has a different perspective or viewpoint. And uh, I think you know the three of us. We, I'm sure Genome and Comic Head would have slightly different ones, but I think we covered some pretty good ones. Uh, can we play from home, Raj? Actually, you can. And not only that, on that show. The chat not only scores, 
But they have a say, possibly, depending on where the wheel spins, as to what the category will be. Um, and you can definitely play from home. I will have, um, I will show things on Instagram and so forth if you send me pics. Absolutely. All right, guys. Any we wrap it up? No. Yeah. I'm good. Wrap it up. Freeze. Wrap it up. Wrap. Okay. Okay. Wrap. All right, guys. Chat, you're the best. You two guys, of course. You know, you guys are consummate graders, and I really appreciate that. You know what you do for this show, which is genome came up with it. But um, you know, we we need we're the ones who, who all of us together make it. I think a really great show. Good night. Yep. God bless. See you in two weeks. Bye.